This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today it's all about the boats and the islands and the water because today we're going to be moving around different islands. We're going to be claiming and building our, our, our buildings there. Uh, and we're going to be, you know, getting these different characters on our side to help us out throughout the game. Today we're going to be looking at a sneak peek of a game that's coming out next year by Bruno Cathala with Days of Wonder. This is his big box release uh, with sort of the same weight as Five Tribes. I took some uh, some information while I was at Board Game Geek Con a few weeks ago as I played the game. I've played it once, so this is sort of a sneak peek and an initial reaction to the game. Uh, so let's take a look. I'm going to give you a very high-level overview of just some of the pictures I've got. I'll voice over some stuff there, uh, and then I'll see you on the other side. In Yamata, you're going to be drafting tiles that have sp certain special abilities on them. The more powerful ones will make you go later in the, la the next turn. The less powerful ones you'll go first or, you know, towards the first next turn. The main way to get points in this game is by gathering these tiles. And you do it by putting certain colored boats around empty islands that have no longer have resources. And you'll be able to build those, those places and get points. And if you build into adjacent islands to one of your own, you get more and more benefits. And as the game goes on, the board gets a little bit more crowded and you have more and more options as the game goes on as to whether you want to get points by islands or get resources. Because if you're able to get a certain amount of resources, you'll be able to get different types of characters. Each one give you a different amount of points and all of them have different special abilities that you'll be able to use for the entire rest of the game and it kind of homes in your strategy. And as the board gets more and more populated, you have many choices of do you want to use special abilities of the characters to manipulate things to get you points? Or do you want to manipulate the board depending on the type of tiles that you choose each round that tells you which order you go in? Uh, or do you want to just get resources? And there's many different ways to go, but everything you do on the board can be used by anybody, which is the most interesting part of the game. All right, well, let's first just talk about weight of game. Uh, they mentioned to me that it's the same weight as five tribes, and I would tend to agree with that. It might be a tiny bit heavier, I felt, but again, I only played it once, so maybe that was just the learning curve, but it's around the same ballpark, so it's not your standard, I'd say, I guess, I don't know what is standard for Days of Wonder anymore. Now they might be going to these heavier games. So this is sort of a, a five tribes, I'd say a medium weight Euro. There's a lot of thinking going on. Now a lot of people talked about, and Bruno talked to me about, some similarities to Five Tribes, and I think this has some of those. Five Tribes is one of those games that was very tactical. You kind of took what the board gave you, and then that sort of beginning, you start to build up sort of a strategy as you're going down one or two paths, and you're starting to do that. But at any point in time, a very good move on the board can get you down a different path that you weren't expecting, get you some points. This is very much like that aspect of tactical. Uh, in Five Tribes, you start with a ton of choices, and as the game goes on, they get less. This has opposite. You start off with not as many choices, but as the game goes on, it starts to go off in different directions that you can go. So sort of opposite effect there, but it still is very tactical. You're looking at a board, you're looking at lots of different colored ships, uh, you're using special abilities. You're looking at the board, you're going, how can I get the most points, either this turn or the next turn, or how can I set myself up for the future? And you're looking at the abilities of there, and I like the drafting aspect of uh, figuring out which ability you're taking, because that will set what turn order you are in the next game, uh, sorry, the next round. And so you're like, oh, do I want this ability? Yeah, let me swap ships, let me buy a ship, let me put it there, which will allow me to do this, which will allow me to get this. So there's a little this to this to this, this type of things there or maybe you don't want that maybe you actually want to get some resources and turn those resources in for some of the special characters which then give you that path almost like the genies do or the jinns do in five tribes they sort of give you a strategy for the game after you get some of those those guys are just like that too or gals because they have points so there's a lot to think about there is a spatial aspect similar to five tribes that you're moving uh, ships around you're trying to get them to cover the island you're trying and the, the most interesting part of the game was when you do anything, anything anybody does on the board can help them, but it can also help the next person. So you're trying to figure out, if I'm going to do this, how can I help everybody else the least? Uh, so again, it does have some similarities and feelings to how Five Tribes plays in general, even though it feels like a completely different game. Similar weight, similar style of tactical game where the board you know, changes things uh, when it's your turn. 
But overall, there's a lot to think about. Lots of things to do with trading and moving ships and switching colors and all the special abilities are cool. Then you have the characters with special abilities and there's a lot there. So a lot of layers. This is definitely one that I'm going to want to stew over some more and play it multiple times when it finally comes out. We know the production is going to be probably amazing from Taze of Wonder. It always is. So I'm really looking forward to this next year and playing it some more and really, you know, taking a bigger bite of it. My initial reaction is I liked it. Um, it, it made my brain happy because I like those style of, of tactical games, but I'll wait and see further how much I enjoy it uh, with, with all the spatial aspects and the colors and things like that. So that's it. If it looks interesting to you, next year Yamatai is coming out from Days of Wonder with Bruno Cathala. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.